Hello, I'm Joey Struggle, your ho ho host for this month's episode of Hempfield Happenings. This month, stay tuned for stories including how the marching band is adjusting to a new class, how a donation from the Hempfield Foundation is helping a Hempfield art classroom, and how a local Taekwondo school is helping students. Stick around for these stories and much more on this month's episode of Hempfield Happenings. This year, the band has moved to a new class for competitions. Liv Anderson discovers how they're working to be successful this season. With the large number of Hemfield marching nights this year, the band has moved to a new class entirely, and there's a lot of hard work and commitment that goes into the process leading up to champs. Hempfield Marching Nights, or HMK for short, has a larger number of members this year, taking effect on the band as a whole. Cavalcade Bands classifies bands by the size of the band, so similar sized bands compete against each other. So the smallest size is called Independence Bands, and that goes all the way up to the largest size, which is Patriot. For the past four or five years, our band has been Yankee, which is the second largest. And then this past year, they actually changed the number classification, and we got bigger, so we were in the largest class, which is Patriot. The super awesome thing about being a bigger band is the sound. Like we just sound so much fuller and like just, we just sound big. And like visually it looks super awesome when like we get clean moves. The hard thing though is like keeping everybody on the same page, you know, because we have like 12 year olds and 18 year olds. So it's kind of hard to keep 101 kids all on the same page. and regulations are all the same as they would be in the rest of Cavalcade. But the mindset of being in Patriot Open is a much different mindset. You know, we're going up against those bigger bands. The minimum number that you can be on is 100 people. And so we have 101, or we did have 101 this year. So it can be a little nerve wracking knowing that, oh, we have 101 people and we're going up with bands that have so many more people and so many more numbers. And it's just, it's a very different mindset. week, the band has smaller sectional rehearsals building up to ensemble rehearsals, where they start putting all the different pieces together. We actually divide the band into three big sections. So we have the color guard, the winds, and the percussion section. And then on Thursday nights, we have what's called ensemble rehearsal, where we practice all together as a group. But the super cool thing about ensemble time is we put like everything together. So we run reps after reps to work on endurance and just getting like the muscle memory of the music and the moving. There are many different risks and challenges that go into each run of the show that people don't often realize. So one of the interesting things is we have a lot of instruments out there and they are both heavy and expensive. So number one, we don't want people crashing into each other 
because they're heavy and they're gonna hurt each other. Specifically, if you're like holding a tuba and somebody hits your tuba into your mouth, it's gonna do some damage. I am a flute player and this year I had a lot of trouble with the wind. Specifically talking about flutes, when you are blowing, you don't actually blow into the flute, you blow across the mouthpiece. So if wind is coming from one way and your air is going another way, it can completely cut out the sound sometimes. Regardless of all the obstacles thrown in their way, the Hempfield Marching Knights are always working to achieve their goals. We want to, number one, give the audience a performance that makes them feel something, whether it be happiness or nostalgia or just excitement or whatever. And for ourselves, our goal is to always do a better show than we did last time. And the theory there is if we're always just competing against ourselves and doing better, and every single time we're able to do that, by the end, we're gonna be really, really good. A lot of our goals is just to perform the way we know how to perform. And the kind of main goal that we have throughout the whole season is to get to that point where you feel satisfied with your performance. Champs this year ended up being very cold and windy, but HMK had a very successful performance, ranking third in a highly competitive division. We actually did a bunch of things to be ready for the cold, just in case it ever came. And then we had a significantly windy, cold experience, which is much more difficult to perform in for all of the sections for a variety of reasons. Your hands are cold, it's harder to breathe as much air, it's harder to play in tune. When the flags go up in the air and the wind blows by, they have to do some adjustments. So I thought our performance was amazing. The students felt great about it coming off the field. There was so much hard work put in leading up to champs, and HMK definitely ended their season on a positive note. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Liv Anderson. At Hempfield High School, students have many opportunities to prepare for graduation. Thomas Williams investigates one of these options, the Career Technology Center, or CTC. Here at Hempfield High School, there are many CTC programs that help Hempfield students prepare for graduation. So they help students prepare for graduation in a couple different ways. Um, it gives students the skills to go out and go right into the workforce if they don't want to attend a post-secondary college. Um, it also, now that Pennsylvania has put new regulations in place for graduation, it can also help students meet that pathway to graduate. CTC for helping for graduation allows students to explore several different avenues in which to be able to go both academically and application level to be able to to learn and grow as individuals? Um, well, just by having like an actual professor that has been in the field for so long, you really get to see and like find out what he has learned over the last 60 years he's been into it. So I definitely really enjoy going to CTC because I've wanted to be in automotive my entire life and it definitely opened up a lot of job opportunities for me and only being in CTC for a couple months I already have a job up at the local garage shop. CTC helped me for graduation. It gives you a chance, gives you an opportunity to learn new skills and new opportunities on what you want to get into, a career you want to get into, a job that you want to get into. So it pushes you forth to get into a graduation and put forth your biggest effort and as long as you're not slacking behind then you got a big opportunity to push forward helps you with graduation and it's a great learning skill and improvement on what you wanted like to do. So the counselors really take on a lot of help with them as far as completing the application, um, there's different help sessions for that, work type, workshop type sessions that they can sign up for during WIN, or they can just pop in and get help from their counselor. Um, there's also some videos that are posted in our Schoology pages for the different grade levels that are able to sign up for those. And with the CTC programs in place, Hemfield High School gives its students the resources they need to prepare and get a job even before their graduation. This is Thomas Williams from Hemfield Happenings. Hemfield has made a lot of changes to its administration recently. I'm here in the studio with Mr. Conrad, the new 10th grade principal. Thanks for being here, Mr. Conrad. Hello, thanks for having me. Uh, so to start off, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? 
Sure. Uh, I'm Mr. Conrad. I'm the uh, 10th grade principal here at Hempfield High School. Prior to this, I was the Dean of Students at Lannisville Middle School the last uh, four years, um, which means that I've had the opportunity to be in the same building and interact and see uh, half the students here at the high school, uh, which is very rewarding. Um, yeah, before that, I, I was a teacher, a social studies teacher, teaching government and economics um, for 25 years, um, most of which was in the, at the high school level. Uh, so yeah, I live here in Lannisville, um, married and have two kids who go to Hempfield schools as well. Cool. Uh, what's your daily tasks as principal? Like what, what does the day look like for you? The day for a principal is never the same. Um, they could be include uh, meetings with students about all kinds of issues uh, from academics or behavior, um, providing different supports. Um, uh, anything really uh, could include um, supporting teachers and, and um, you know supervision of teachers and making sure the building is safe and, and uh, running the way it should be. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into uh, operating a school. Uh, the custodial staff, the, the secretarial staff, counselors, um, you know, all of those things fall under the supervision of, of the administrative team. And, uh, you know, the, no day is ever the same, um, which makes the job uh, a lot fun. Um, but I don't approach it as a job. It's pretty much who I am uh, as a person, um, which is rewarding. And uh, what new things are you and the rest of the administration uh, bringing to the high school this year? I think um, Dr. Brossman uh, has done a great job um, with leading um, the administrative team, but Dr. Becker and Mr. Snitzer and myself, um, I was hired just at the beginning of the school year, uh, and they had already uh, outlined a, a lot of the changes schedule-wise and things like that, um, but I think uh, the overall um, theme is we want Hempfield to be uh, a great place to be, where people enjoy coming to work every day, where students enjoy coming to learn, um, and everyone being involved in, in the whole school environment and what Hempfield has to offer. And I think all the, the slight changes and, and the bigger changes that the administrative team has made um, from disciplinary actions to Thoughtful Thursday to bell schedules. Uh, I think overall um, the theme was, uh, is to make sure that, uh, you know, Hempfield is a, is a great place to be. And you mentioned Thoughtful Thursdays. Um, what are Thoughtful Thursdays? Thoughtful Thursdays are, uh, you know, a midweek reflection point for students and staff to kind of uh, take note of who they are, where they are. Um, it's the, the goal of it is to, to make people just um, be aware of their situation and how they want to impact where they're, where they're at. Um, here at Hempfield, whether it's interacting in classes or in the hallways in their friend groups, um, on the bus, it's a way for us to just pass kindness on to others and um, you know, be the best version of ourselves. Well, thank you for coming to the studio, Mr. Conrad. Thank you, I appreciate it. Now over to Davy at East Petersburg Elementary, where the art department just got a new pottery wheel. Which was so exciting, and so we ordered the pottery wheel, and about two weeks ago, it was... In the East Petersburg Elementary Art Classroom, young students have a chance to try something completely new, a pottery wheel. In the elementary classroom, traditionally, you don't have a pottery wheel. That's something that you um, wait to, to introduce students to until they're in high school. Um, but because it's something that I'm very passionate about, I wanted to be able to introduce my students to all different ways of art making and different ways of using clay. Um, so last year, I applied for a grant through the Hempfield Foundation to purchase a pottery wheel for our classroom here at East Pete and um, we received the grant and so I ordered the pottery wheel and the different materials that you need um, for the wheel and we just received it about two weeks ago and so I've um, been starting to show my classes how it works. She does this with the help of her student teacher, a senior at Millersville University. 
I've actually done a lot of clay demonstrations. I used to work at a pottery studio and I would do them twice a week. So when Mrs. Bouet asked me to do it, I was like, yeah, I can do that. That's a pretty easy thing. Her experience was evident. As she made a bowl, the class looked on with amazement. It's like a little pot shape. Oh, wow. It was really, really neat. It just made my uh, brain do a little jumble because it was so satisfying. I love that sound. You like that sound? Whoa. Oh, that's that's everyone's sick. favorite part. I can make spirals with it. The clay wheel also teaches important lessons about art. Artists have all different types of passion. Just because um, you're an artist doesn't mean that you like drawing or um, you like clay. Maybe you're an artist that has a passion for architecture. Maybe you're an artist who has um, a passion for animation. For a while, I thought I wasn't very good at art because I'm not very good at drawing. But then when I got to clay, I realized that I was really good with sculpting um, and throwing things on the wheel. I could do that pretty naturally. So it made me feel better about myself and it made me feel like I had kind of a purpose and a talent. And I think that's really important for students as well to know that there are so many different options. So I want my students to know that it's okay, that they might not excel at drawing, but they might excel in a different type of art form, um, like creating sculptures. This morning in my uh, previous class at a demonstration, I was making a base and I accidentally cut the top off and I was like, oh, well, that's just what happens in ceramics and I made it into a bowl then. So it's nice to be able to show students like, you can make mistakes in art, but you can also still save it and make it into something, even if it wasn't what you originally intended it to be for. And I'm very uh, grateful for the Hemfield Foundation and that they were willing to um, give us the money to buy our clay wheel and um, give this experience to our students. The Hempfield schools and communities work together to make wheel a cool opportunities for their students. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Davy Striggle. Throughout our 25th season, we've been reporting on how Hempfield Happenings graduates are using their skills in their careers. For some, the program gave them more than just a communication skill set. Josiah Pletcher reports on how the program changed the lives of two former students who are now married, Joel and Julia. And, um, are you going to be working in this office? Or <laughs> Joel Pletcher and Julia Givens met eight years ago as freshmen in high school. That year, they both took ComTech 1. Little did they know that in this class, they would not only find their career path, but they would also find their partner for life. Julia and I met on the first day of freshman year of high school. Um, we actually did not have ComTech 1 that day. No, We nice had ComTech 1 on the second day of high school, but on the first day of high school we met in second period in art class. Mm -hmm. And I came in late because I was assigned a locker late, and immediately when I walked in, I noticed Julia up at the front and I thought to myself, I kind of want to sit next to her at some point, so. And that was the start of their relationship. From there, they would go on to make countless memories. My favorite memory of us together from ComTech has to be um, just going to Anaheim in 2017 for STN. We had a lot of fun with friends and just like a really cool thing to get to be like, oh yeah, I went on a high school trip with my girlfriend. Like, it and was super fun. And it was your fun. first time on a plane. It was my first time. So on that a plane. was so fun to sit by Joel while he was on the airplane, getting to be up in the sky for the first time. Yeah, definitely. It was like our first time traveling a long distance together mm -hmm. and wouldn't have wanted it any other way but with ComTech. I definitely say that shooting the music video together for Outcast was super fun <laughs> in STN and also filming our final WHHS together was really fun. We were assigned to be co-hosts with each other and that moment was just so surreal because we had started high school together and then we were ending our time on the morning news together. So that was just really special to get to do it with the person I loved and it was a great time. For our last time, that's all for today, Hempfield. From the Arthur A. Hackman studio, have, have a, a hump, hump day. day. Throughout their time in ComTech, they both learned many lessons that they agree helped them in the future. ComTech really set me up for college and going into my field of film and video production in the sense that it just gave me a foundation to figure out what I liked and didn't like. Um, but it also taught me so many valuable lessons in both communications as well as technology and life. Um, just little things like 
get outside of your comfort zone, you know, grow through being mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Mr. Bender used to always say, uncomfortable is good, unsafe is not, or something like that. And that just really always stuck with me throughout college and then beyond. Yeah, I was blown away by how much Comtech set me up for college and the career that I have now. I got a video marketing internship, not because I took any video classes in college, but because of the skills that I had in Comtech. And I was able to have that internship all the way up until I graduated, and then they took me on full time. However, the lessons they learned didn't only set them up for their careers, but also their relationship. Comtech definitely had an influence on our relationship. Obviously, it brought us together more than just art class, um, but it was something that taught us some super important lessons about each other. We said earlier, like, oh yeah, Comtech teaches you lessons about life. It teaches you lessons about relationships with people as mm -hmm. well. We learned so much about working with each other. Um, we had lots of disagreements and arguments and fights or, you know, it also gave Julia a window into who I was as a creative person, who I was in time-sensitive and pressure situations, and I got to see those sides of her as well, so mm -hmm. taught us a lot about each other. There were just so many times where we'd have to jump in and help each other out or help the other person deal with the stress or just like love each other in the moment that we were at and realize that you know we didn't have to make a big deal of, out of things. We could just support each other. I think we really learned how to support each other and see what we were good at. Since graduating college, Joel and Julia are doing what they love and they are getting to do it together. So I've been working at Track 5 since my freshman year of college and then I was hired as a full-time employee in May of 2021 after I graduated college, which meant that the video marketing internship that I had had before was open and I happened to know someone who would be pretty good at filling that role. So um, I was in the market for an internship and I was like, what if I just took your internship? And so I actually just last summer got to work alongside Julia pretty much as her intern for the summer. So I was a video intern on the team. Um, and then later on, just this past December, that led to a full time position here as the videographer at Track 5. Joel and Julia love looking back at their past, but they also enjoy looking towards their future. After working together for a few months, it's been really great, but what we've been really focusing on recently is how the wedding's coming up in June. Woo! So we're getting married on June 12th of this year, and we're just really, really excited for that. Yeah, I think in our future, we just have a lifetime of creativity and connecting with other people and with each other and just supporting each other in all of those endeavors. A lot of our future in a communications industry is a little uncertain. You never know where you're gonna go, um, where in the country you're gonna be, what your next position is gonna be, how you're gonna move up. Um, but what's for certain is we have each other and it's super fun that we get to just be with each other. The whole way along. Yeah, it's a really unique thing to get to have the support from your best friend throughout your career. So mm -hmm. I want to support her and she likes to support me. So it's really nice. Together, Joel and Julia have found a way to be successful. They'll never stop dreaming and they will always be believing. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Josiah Fletcher. Within Hempfield, there are several opportunities for students to participate in activities that help them learn things they don't learn in school. Sullivan Fogel details Mike Louie's Taekwondo School, one local business that provides those opportunities, helping students learn and mature both mentally and physically. Net. Mike Louis Taekwondo School is a martial arts academy here in Hemfield, specializing in mind, body, and spirit. And step forward, knife and step forward. After his day-to-day -day work as a building aide at Centerville Elementary School, Mike Louis spends four nights a week instructing Taekwondo. I started Taekwondo in 1978, and I've been doing it since then, so I haven't taken a break since 1978. 45 years, uh, January would be 46 years, because that's when I started when I was five. Some want to just do it exercise. Some maybe like me. As a kid, I learned, I loved martial art movies. 
and you want to emulate that. I always wanted to be Bruce Lee. Well, actually, some of my students in the past have been uh, attacked before, and they realized that they didn't have the capability of defending themselves. Uh, so they learned, they heard about my program with the self defenses. And so, you know, everybody has their different avenues, and we all come together as one family. Instructor Louie's view of his class as a family is both figurative and literal, with his son Nick being a student and instructor at the school. There's a, there's a bit more pressure, I would say, because instructor's son, but uh, I think, I think it's, it's a positive thing to have my dad as the teacher. I have a lot more opportunities than the other students um, to teach. Uh, he started when he was three, and I've actually have two other kids. Nick has stuck with it because you know he's been my right hand man. He he attends meetings with me, he trains with me, we go to seminars all over the East Coast. So he's really good at what he does, and I'm really proud of him. Students and instructors alike have lives outside of Taekwondo and apply what they learn in the martial arts class to daily life. My one thing is always wake up with a good head on my shoulders. I'm a building aide at Centerville Elementary School. You know I'm there for the kids. Uh, I, I show up to work because I love the kids. I love working with them every day and they make me smile. It pushes me to make myself a better person overall. Currently a lot of aspects kind of mix because uh, Taekwondo is a very practical art. Taekwondo emphasizes uh, good character traits and giving back to your community and serving in different ways which I think every person should experience. Also there's a nice social group between other students in this class and at school, which we have a common interest there. For many reasons, people continue to take their Taekwondo lessons every week. You know, coming back every single week to teach the students and help out at the school, it just, it just means a lot to me. The best lesson is being a good person. So we hope to teach the student that your mind is stronger than your body. It's a commitment. If you want to continue Taekwondo, you have to keep climbing. Mike Louie's Taekwondo School provides its students with life lessons and experiences that help them grow stronger. For Enfield Happenings, I'm Sullivan Fogel. Hello, and welcome to this month's Hempfield Highlights, where we highlight things that happened around the district this month. On November 8th and 9th, Hempfield's ninth graders gathered for a STEM summit. Students explored STEM activities from coding to making a marble roller coaster to even making a fake hand using chemistry. The Hempfield varsity football team won their way onto the top seed in the league for the postseason but then lost in a tough match against Mannheim Township in the quarterfinals. The Hempfield girls volleyball team did great this season, making it all the way up to state quarterfinals. Well, that's all for this month's episode of Hempfield Happenings. We appreciate you watching and continuing to celebrate our 25th anniversary with us. Happy holidays and happy new year.